Good morning. My name is John Scott, and I'm the Vice President of Automation Sales for the Americas. I'll be uh, walking us through the presentation this morning. I'm uh, sitting in for Neil Escott, who has uh, lost his voice. But uh, if you look at the chat session, uh, you should be able to uh, interact with him uh, in there. Uh, for, for those of you that are, are joining us and were part of our first presentation, uh, welcome back. And for those of you uh, for whom this is new, uh, a couple of housekeeping items. There is a chat session uh, down in the middle of the screen. You can interact uh, with Neil and uh, Lucia and some of my colleagues uh, during the presentation with any questions you may have. And then we'll also have a question and answer session at, uh, at the end. Uh, where I'll be able to, uh, to to answer and address your questions as well. So let's um, let's go ahead and get started. A little bit of background um, on me. Uh, I have been uh, part of the uh, previously the WearNet and the Navis and now the Calwar organization since uh, 2001. And so as we go through the the presentation today. I will uh, try and address some of the experience that I've had with the deployment of these various solutions uh, over the last 12 years. So one of the one of the things that I think is very important as we start uh, is to talk a little bit about you know what what drives a terminal operator to look at uh, process automation. And there's a good quote here from Mr. Christensen with APM Terminals. He spoke recently at the Global Liner Shipping Conference. And in his address, he talked about the important, importance of the increased reliability and efficiency of an operation. And if you think about your terminals process today, and if you think about the manual process, um, for, which is what it is for many, for updating the terminal operating system, the reliability of the data that flows to the terminal operating system in a manual operation is completely dependent on the skill set of either the operator or the clerk that's updating that system. And that creates um, you know, a, a lack of consistency in the operation. And from an efficiency standpoint, it also leaves the operation dependent upon the speed at which uh, that information is input into the terminal operating system. And so what we'll be talking about today is the ability to use technology in order to automatically um, update the terminal operating system with the information that it, that it requires. Uh, the focus today will be on the operation from the rail, I'm sorry, from the vessel to the yard, uh, but we will cover broadly uh, several other uh, process automation solutions as well. So in addition to you know, this need for reliability, need for efficiency, I think it's also important to look at you know, what are some of the current challenges that are ma uh, making the importance of the process automation solution uh, more pertinent today. So if you look at the size of the vessel and you look at the demand that that places on the terminal, in the past you may have seen several smaller vessels and a more distributed uh, workload. Now, much larger vessels and a concentration of volume that means the terminal operator is required to put more equipment and more people um, against that operation uh, and during any single period of time. And that creates additional strain on the organization and you know, additional challenges for efficiency, reliability, and for safety as well. So when you look at um, your terminal, uh, the other challenge is you know, the competition that you face in the marketplace. And if you look, uh, this slide illustrates very well you know, the 20 year period leading up to 2010, we had a total of nine fully automated terminals. And then if we look at the last three years post 2010, we have a dozen fully automated terminals, either live or in the process of going live. And so this creates a level of competition that uh, you know, the, the easiest way to address is through a process automation solution, uh, relatively easy to deploy and relatively inexpensive uh, compared to a fully automated terminal. 
So today, as we go through this presentation, we'll be talking about you know, the process automation solutions that can be deployed by a terminal in order to be more competitive in the marketplace. Now, the next slide um, helps to explain where these process automation solutions fit into the overall cargo tech family. So, you know, certainly, um, you know, some, some of uh, the solutions will be more visible than others. So, Navis Terminal Operating System, very well known. Uh, Broma uh, Spreader is very well known. And um, within the equipment automation group, you know, certainly um, the automated stacking cranes, the auto strats, uh, these are all very visible elements of the cargo tech family. Um, less visible are the solutions that we're talking about today that are part of the Calmar Smartport process automation. So what we'll be looking at today is the different, soft, different software modules that can be licensed that will automate the flow of information uh, from, the ter from the terminal to the terminal operating system, and then, of course, back to, uh, to the operators uh, so that they can perform the, uh, the required tasks. So the solution that we're talking about today, you know, in addition to the, the Navis, the Broma, the Calmar components, there are also a number of partners that we have worked closely with in order to provide an integrated turnkey solution. So if I look back, you know, at the early days with APL or a APMT, some of the initial process automation solutions in LA Long Beach, um, this this alliance was not available. And so it was up to the terminal operator to identify the different suppliers, contract with those suppliers, and to integrate those different vendors. So what the SmartPort Alliance does is to uh, offer to the terminal operator a single point of contact, Calmar, and a single project manager that's responsible for the project and a solution that is pre-integrated so that the terminal operator doesn't have to spend time um, selecting vendors and integrating a solution. So as we go through this presentation today, I'll be talking about OCR, I'll be talking about RFID, and we have different partners, APS, who provides the OCR capabilities, uh, Sameo, who provides the locating capabilities, whether GPS or local positioning radar, and Zebra that provides the RFID component and cross-control cross the screens. So all of these uh, products are available through Calmar and are supported by Calmar and integrated uh, with uh, the various uh, you know, Cal Calmar solutions. So today there are nine different um, Calmar SmartPort uh, solutions, and we'll be focused on five of those today. So we'll start, we'll cover Smart Key, uh, which is the automation process of the key crane. We'll move on to Smart Lifts, which is the transition and job promotion process between the lifting equipment and the, uh, the terminal tractors. We'll talk about Smart Stack, which is the automation of the placement or, or put or pull of the container from the stack. And we'll talk about Smart Path and also about Smart Fleet. I skipped a slide. Okay, so to start, I'd like to walk us through the manual process that uh, is common in a, uh, in a terminal tractor based operation. And then I'll also address briefly as we go through the slide some of the differences that may exist. Uh, you know, for a strat operation. So if we start on the left with the vessel, um, the first process for, for most terminals as the container comes off the vessel is the identification of the container. And the identification in a terminal tractor operation of, of the terminal tractor that receives that container. And that, that, could, that process could be uh, performed by a clerk. It could be performed by a foreman or an operator but it's typically performed by a person. And until that information is entered into the terminal operating system, the terminal operating system um, waits. 
So, you know, if you look, for example, at Navis, and for those of you that have used equipment control, um, that function is performed in the hatch clerk module. And until that information is available to, to Sparks or N4, um, there's, you know, a work instruction is not available for the terminal tracker. So, you know, when you talk about efficiency and reliability, um, that information is the first step in getting uh, the work instruction to the terminal tracker. So what we, you know, in that process, what we automate uh, with Smart Key is the capture of the container ID, so we know what container we're dealing with, and the capture of the terminal tractor ID, so that we know what terminal tractor we're dealing with. So that information is captured automatically. There's no need for any human intervention and Sparks uh, or you know, any third party terminal operating system then has the information that it needs in order to automate um, the process of determining the best work instruction for that terminal tractor. And then typically that job will be dispatched to a screen that's inside the terminal tractor. So at that point, the terminal tractor is able to leave the key, they have the, the, work, the work instruction and no human intervention has been needed um, uh, through the process under the hook. Uh, the next step, uh, as the terminal tractor moves into the yard, for those terminals that are using um, prime route, either within a strat operation or a terminal tractor operation, prime route understands the location of the terminal tractor or the strat based upon the operator hitting a function key. And if the operator hits the function key consistently and timely, then the terminal operating system has the good information. Um, if they don't, then the terminal operating system makes decisions with information that's, that's not perfect. So that's the first step. The second step, when that terminal tractor reaches the lifting equipment, whether it be a terminal, uh, whether it be a top loader or an RTG, um, that top loader RTG or, or, or a surrogate, a clerk, that's uh, acting on behalf of that operator has to scroll through a list, identify the work instruction, and select the appropriate job. And based on that job selection, then the terminal operating system um, makes assumptions on where the, you know, which job is being, is being worked. So again, through automation, we have the ability to automatically identify when the terminal tractor reaches its point of work, so that for a prime route, we can provide that information. We also have the ability to automatically identify when two pieces of equipment are in proximity to each other and to promote the job so that the operator doesn't have to scroll. And then lastly, we have the ability to identify that the job that was instructed is actually the job that was performed. So each of those three manual steps that would otherwise exist uh, can be eliminated. Uh, lastly, with, with the inventory step, um, for most manual operations, once the clerk or the operator selects the job, the terminal operator, the terminal operating system assumes that that's the job that was worked and updates the inventory accordingly. So if the operator selects the wrong job or performs a different job, then the toss ends up with, with bad information and that's reflected in an in inaccurate inventory. Okay, I'm now going to step us with a little bit more detail through the, the, um, each of the components. So we'll start uh, with Smart Key. And if you look at the lower right hand corner of your screen, you'll see um, on the sill beam of the ship to shore crane, right above where it says hard hat area, you'll see three cameras. So we work with APS to install cameras on the crane. Those cameras are used to uh, read, to take pictures of the container ID, and then we use optical character recognition in order to automatically read the ID of that container. If you look uh, just above the container at the terminal tractor, you'll see a barcode on the roof of the terminal tractor. Um, that barcode is part of the matchmaker solution. And again, we use that barcode to identify the container that, I'm sorry, the tractor that we're dealing with. So now we have good information on the ID of the container, 
in a, on the ID of the terminal tracker. In the case of a strat operation, we would be tracking um, as well the spreader, and we would understand the exact lane position that that, spread, that that spreader releases the container into. And in software, we would store the ID of that container against the lane position. So now, regardless whether it's a terminal tractor operation or a strand operation, we know the ID of the container, and we know either the, the exact lane position to match it to a, to a subsequent strad pickup or the terminal tractor. And that allows us to, uh, you know, to, to automate uh, fully uh, this hatch cord process. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk now about um, smart lift. When that terminal tractor um, receives the work instruction, and proceeds into the terminal. We are tracking that terminal tractor in order to understand uh, when it arrives at its point of work. We are also uh, tracking the lifting equipment, whether it be a top loader or a reach stacker or an RTG. And when that tractor arrives, we're able to use that automation to automatically promote the job. And this is a very important step. If you put yourself in the seat of that RTG operator, you know, in a, or top loader, and imagine for a moment, you know, the, the first process of identifying the truck that's underneath you, the second step of scrolling through a list of jobs and finding the truck that corresponds on that list, and then confirming that you actually have the ability to perform that uh, particular job, that all takes time. And what we're talking about here is eliminating each of those manual steps so that the software is responsible for giving a single work instruction to that RTG or top loader so that they can simply perform the task that the terminal operating system has designated uh, for that terminal tractor. Okay, so smart stack is the last step um, in this process. So in a manual operation, the RTG or the top loader, based on the work instruction that they've selected, will then go ahead and place the container uh, where they've been instructed to, to place it. Or in the case of delivery, they'll, they'll pull a box and deliver the box they've been instructed. And again, in, in a manual operation, the terminal operating system assumes that if that job is selected by the operator or by a clerk, that that is the job that's performed. And if that's not the case, then there will, it will result in you know, the inventory being inaccurate. So SmartStack removes uh, those inaccuracies. So we install automation in order to track the spreader on the lifting equipment, and we're able to calculate the, the exact position that the container is placed from or put to, and we update the terminal operating system accordingly. So whether the work instruction is followed or not, we're able to provide the exact information to the terminal operating system. Okay, smart path. So two, two more that I'm gonna step through here, smart path and smart fleet. So smart path is um, an automation tool that's provided by uh, Navis, um, and it's based on uh, the prime route application. And what PrimeRoute does is it seeks to reduce any unladen travel time and to optimize the path that uh, reduce the travel time by optimizing the best terminal tractor to perform a job. The challenge is that it's dependent upon the terminal operator, I'm sorry, in a manual environment, it's dependent upon the equipment operator to hit a function key when they reach a point of work. So when they arrive at the berth, they would hit a function key to identify they're at, that they're at the berth. The challenge is that if one operator tends to hit the button before another, then we don't have consistent and reliable information uh, flowing to the terminal operating system, which means that the most efficient decision is not made. So by adding a locate technology, we can automatically track uh, whether it be a strad or a terminal tractor, and provide that continuous location information 
to prime out so that it can make better decisions and you know be fully optimized. And so Smart Path allows for the automation of what would otherwise be a, you know, a manual process of an operator hitting a function key. So Smart Fleet, it, in addition to monitoring um, the, the, um, the twist locks, the, the 2040 sensor, the information that we need in order to have smart lift and smart track work efficiently, once we've put that infrastructure in place, we also now have laid the groundwork for gathering other information from the equipment. So if you take a look at this slide, what you're seeing here on your screen is a dashboard. And each one of those squares is a dashboard for each piece of equipment in your terminal. So you're able to, to see the fuel level, you're able to see any engine fault codes, and for your maintenance team, you're able to see uh, when, maintenance, when maintenance is needed or if maintenance is overdue. So it allows for a more efficient process for managing uh, the, the equipment that you own. So we're gonna take uh, a break here and take a look at SmartMap, which is a tool that provides a, a visual uh, for everything that we've just talked about. So I'm going to turn this over to Barry and uh, let him begin. Thank you. As mentioned, uh, I'm Barry Gallings, sales engineer for uh, CargoTech Calmar, and I will be stepping through just a brief overview of the uh, Smart Map application. What you see on the screen now is a very zoomed out view of a particular terminal in uh, Long Beach, California. This is an RFID uh, terminal where we have outfitted all of the uh, internal CHE and uh, street trucks with uh, RFID. Um, from a map uh, perspective, we have some of the basic user uh, functionality. Uh, say Zoom, for example, I can zoom into a particular machine or part of the yard. I can pan and move around. I can zoom back out. Another interesting feature is the uh, traffic pattern history of these assets as, as they move throughout the facility. In the upper right hand corner, I can select the uh, snail trail history. And what this will give is an idea of the traffic internal versus external. So, so the bright magenta color here are the street trucks that are entering the facility and where they are going once on site. Black lines, the black trails, are the uh, internal trucks. This can give folks an idea as to what the uh, congestion issues are, where in the yard they're having traffic problems, things of that nature. I can also look at individual assets and their traffic patterns. So what I'll queue up is an actual terminal truck. And the H113 is what we've got selected here in the middle right-hand side of the screen. If I hit the trace button, that'll give us an idea of what this truck did during this shift. Started down here uh, in what looks to be the parking lot and then looks to be working vessel operations as this up here at the top is the, uh, the berth area. We have uh, alerts that we can set up that will automatically trigger if a particular truck goes in an area of the yard it's not supposed to. So in addition to seeing visually on the map where things are in real time, we can also automate uh, the alerts if, if an asset goes into an area that, uh, that the terminal does not want it to be in. So let's look at a particular street truck visit. I've selected a street truck, and again, I'm going to hit the trace feature. And this is in replay mode, so I have the ability to press play and pause, and, and I can speed up in the lower left-hand corner here, the, the manner in which it's played back. And this gives an idea of where this truck goes after it came through the end gates. And rather than watch the entire truck visit, I'll speed up to where the actual truck exited the facility. So the end gates are here. 
you can see where the truck came up through and down this row here to be serviced uh, by one of the RTGs and then exited the facility ultimately here at the outgates. So let's take a look at uh, the RTG grid and what's happening there. I've got RTG 27 selected here. We'll zoom in a little bit. And when you zoom into a certain level, you'll automatically get the license plate IDs populated for the street trucks as they're in queue here, waiting to be serviced by the RTGs. In the lower right-hand column, or right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the, the transition history for this particular machine. So you've got a container ID from where to where. So in this example that's highlighted, there's a container ID, there's a from, which is a position in the stack, that's a row base cell tier, to the RTG, which means the RTG pulled the container from the stack. And in the next row, you see where the RTG actually handed the container off to the street truck. That's essentially just a brief overview of the RFID site. Uh, what I can also show is our GPS site. And we'll show the uh, top handler and terminal truck handoff. So other than RFID, this site actually has DGPS on the uh, top handlers and regular GPS on the uh, terminal trucks. Again, this is in playback mode. You can see the uh, truck pull into position. If I pause it right here, we can see that the terminal truck is in position. The top handler spreader is narrow. It's uh, working a 20-foot container. And the top handler is positioned over the back of the uh, truck, which would indicate it's pulling a rear 20. And as I hit play again, this spreader will go from clear to a solid color, which that gives us the indication that the, uh, that the pull from truck actually occurred. Pulls the container, the terminal truck will drive off, and the top handler will continue into the stack to place the container in the stack. So let's take a look at the same scenario, but the handoff will be between terminal truck and RTG. Truck will pull into position, and the exchange will, will take place between the terminal truck and the RTG. And when that exchange has taken place, the uh, terminal truck will, will drive off. So that's essentially a, a, just a brief overview. Um, given the time constraints of the webinar series, uh, that's, that's all I'm allowed to show at this point. Um, certainly there is a lot more to show with the Smart Map application, and uh, I would encourage you to reach out to your sales team uh, if you're interested in seeing uh, more detail and perhaps even request detail for operations that maybe suit uh, your facility and, and how your facility operates. Thank you. Barry does a great job, and the Smart Map tool ships with uh, with any of our uh, any of the products that we've talked about today. So I'd like to now focus on uh, an overview of where these solutions are currently being deployed, and then talk with a little bit more detail about uh, where where these solutions are live. And based on the poll, I'll, I'll try and uh, pay extra attention to Smart Key because it seems like it's where we have the most interest today. So um, TTI Long Beach, um, this is a customer that we're working with currently. Um, they are in the process of updating their system. They deployed a process automation system um, early, uh, 
around 2007, 2008 timeframe, we're in the process of uh, updating that system. Um, and everything we've talked about today in terms of smart key, smart lift, um, smart stack, uh, that will all be uh, live at uh, TTI Long Beach later this year. Um, APMT Elizabeth, um, new customer in New Jersey, and they also are deploying smart key against all of their cranes, um, deploying the hardware you know, we've talked about on all of their lifting equipment, all of their terminal tractors, and uh, we'll also be, uh, uh, the Port Authority itself will also be going live with a requirement for tag trucks um, in July of this year. And at that point, they'll also be doing the full automation uh, from, from the gate that you saw in the demo that Barry just provided of tracking the street trucks. So both TTI Long Beach and APMT Elizabeth uh, going live this year with the, with the system we just talked about. Um, London Gateway uh, will have a smart uh, stack application on APMT Our House uh, focused on smart fleet. Uh, SPRC Columbia was just there a week ago. And they have are the first customer of ours in South America with a uh, street truck tracking application. They also have the, the uh, smart rail solution for their RTGs and the uh, smart uh, fleet uh, solution uh, for all of their equipment as well. Uh, Santos Brazil uh, going live this year with uh, smart key on 13 of their key cranes. Uh, Malta Freeport. Uh, if you were with us uh, for the previous webinar, you'll remember seeing Smart Path. They are live uh, with that application. And uh, North Port, uh, Malaysia deploying a Smart Fleet application. So this just gives you a highlight of some of the current projects. And it was also, also going to take a little bit closer look, you know, almost a case study at the terminals, uh, 13 of them in the LA Long Beach area and the history really over the last eight to 10 years of uh, their deployments of various process automation solutions. So upper left-hand corner, TradePak, um, they were uh, one of the first uh, customers uh, to deploy uh, Keycrane OCR in the LA Basin and followed by um, every terminal operator now in the LA Basin uh, has deployed Keycrane OCR on their on all of their cranes, and I've highlighted here in red uh, those terminals that are using the smart key software in order to automate um, the handoff and the uh, at at the key crane, and uh, you'll see a total of nine of those uh, of those terminals use the smart key product product. Um, the next one that I've highlighted there is Smart Lift. So you can see which terminal operators are using Smart Lift in order to automate the handoff. For 12 of these terminals, it's a uh, terminal tractor to top loader operation for vessel discharge and load back. So the, the handoff for the lift is between a terminal tractor and, and, a, uh, and a top loader. And then for Smart Stack, um, I highlighted there in blue, uh, those terminals that are using Smart Stack in order to automate um, the update of the container position in the stack, or for you know for vessel load back to confirm the exact container that's been pulled and, and loaded back to the ship. Um, Smart Lane, uh, we talked about that at our last webinar. Um, Smart Lane is deployed at every terminal in LA Long Beach, and this is the, for the purpose of validating the uh, tag that is on the street truck. Uh, that tag is required by the Port Authority and it's used for validating uh, compliance with the California Air Re Resources Board emissions requirements, CARB, and also with the Port of LA and the Port of Long Beach uh, security initiatives. Um, so each terminal uses the Smart Lane application. And then 12 of the 13 terminals um, have the ability to track the truck wherever it goes in the terminal, uh, similar to what you saw in Barry's uh, smart, smart map uh, demonstration there. So it's interesting to see how this has evolved and how these uh, terminal operators have deployed um, different parts of the technology. 
Um, as Barry mentioned, you know, we, we've moved from generation one to generation two, you know, solutions. Um, what for many of these terminals was a 100% RFID based solution is now a combination of uh, RFID and uh, some of the newer differential GPS solutions that are uh, provided by Sameo. So uh, just two or three more slides that I think are important. So when we look at um, the solutions, so far we've talked a lot about the technology. Um, the people are a very important component. And when you look at LA Long Beach and the number of deployments that we've done there over the years, the, the value and the skills that have been developed in, in our people are very important. So, you know, wh whether you're, you know, your, your, your toss is a, a Sparks toss or, or not, um, you know, we're toss independent. The solution, as you saw in LA Long Beach, um, four of those terminals run the, uh, the Sparks or Encore system. The others have, uh, have different tosses. So the system's toss independent. And we've worked with a number of different, uh, with, with, with a number of different tosses. Um, the same is true for uh, the equipment, um, you know, whether it's Calmar equipment or you know, somebody else's equipment, uh, we're able to deploy the automation that we've talked about today on any equipment. And you know, our people have the expertise to put together a system design and to work with uh, whatever terminal operating system and whatever equipment uh, that, that you have. Um, and then, of course, the most important component is support. So once your system is up and running, um, you're able uh, to, if you have a challenge, you're able to open a case, log a case, and very quickly have um, response. And one of the things that's unique about this team is their ability to support the entire solution. So whether it be a problem with GPS or a problem with RFID or a problem with uh, one of the interfaces, um, each of each of these individuals um, is cross-trained. They've been to Germany, they've been to Germany, they've been to Sameo's training, they've been to San Diego and been to APS's training. So you know whether it's Constantine or Robert or Kenneth, you're able to um, have an expert you know remote into your site, figure out what the problem is, fix it, and once that problem is fixed, you have the opportunity to close the case and rate us. And so I'm very proud that in the fourth quarter of last year, you know, almost a perfect uh, customer satisfaction or CSAT score um, on a scale of one to five. Okay, great. So just to, to, to summarize here, we, we stepped through the importance of the information flow and the importance of having reliable information for the terminal operating system, and the importance of using process automation in order to ensure that that information flows automatically and efficiently to the terminal operating system. You know, we, we talked specifically when we talked about SmartPath about the importance of accurate information, and when we talked about the Smart Key application about the importance of that information flowing quickly. So rather than waiting for manual input to occur, um, the system can instead proceed in real time as fast as the operation is proceeding, that information is flowing to the terminal operating system. So you know, this increased efficiency, increased speed is what enables an otherwise manual terminal to compete with a fully automated terminal. And also we talked about the need to you know, help turn the larger vessels more quickly. And it's this increased efficiency that allows a otherwise manual terminal to uh, work more efficiently, work more quickly, and turn the vessel uh, more quickly. Um, we, we didn't talk so much about the cost, but uh, in general, these solutions are relatively inexpensive, especially relative to a completely automated uh, uh, solution. And uh, importantly, they're, they're relatively easy to deploy. Uh, the ROI is typically somewhere in the six to 12 month time frame. So you know we'll be uh, we'll be at TOC Europe. You know we look forward to the opportunity to sit with you and to understand your specific uh, requirements better, and to work with you to put together a uh, a return you know a return on investment.
Thank you.